the, this session is being recorded after the presentation. I will upload both the, the slides as well as a recording of the session to BMC communities where, uh, where, the, event, um, where the event invite was, and you'll get an automated email from WebEx that shows you, uh, that gives you the link to that, to that location so you can look it up. Um, today's topic is IT cost optimization, and we have two presenters, Robin Reddick uh, and Rick Laforte. They're going to talk about trends in uh, the market as far as cost management is concerned for both data center and cloud, migration strategies, and then we're going to give you a quick demo at the end. Uh, with that, uh, I have everybody's lines muted, um, so if you want to ask a question, please use the Q&A window within WebEx. Rick and I will be monitoring that while Robin is presenting and vice versa. And then at the end, if we have time, uh, I'll be happy to unmute lines so we can have a conversation if needed. All right, with that, let me turn it over to Robin Reddick. Great, thanks, Jeff. Um, so welcome, everybody. Um, as Jeff said, what I just wanted to do is take about 10 minutes or so and just share with you, you know, some learnings that um, we have gathered by talking to organizations about really it's about their cloud adoption. And what we're seeing is as organizations begin adopting cloud, you know, cost optimization is becoming a huge focus. You know, it's been around for quite some time historically under the name of capacity optimization or capacity management, but cloud is really driving a bigger cost optimization challenge for companies. So next slide, Seth. Oh, great, I have control, terrific. So some of the challenges that we're seeing out there in uh, the marketplace or in companies specifically is three things. You know, first of all, cloud is really, once again, you know, driving a whole new focus on cost. So organizations have to become much more cost conscious. Uh, they're making decisions about whether they want to uh, spend infrastructure costs as a capital expense or an operational expense. And then, of course, there's lots of buyers out there for cloud services, which is really having a huge impact on IT costs. Uh, the other thing is, is we're seeing, you know, organizations now have decisions to make about where do they want to run their applications and workloads. Um, are they better off running them on-prem or do they want to move them over to the cloud? Uh, sometimes that becomes more of a philosophical or strategic decision for companies. Some decide that they want to move whole, uh, um, wholesale over to the cloud and some are a little bit more particular and want to make decisions about where is it best to run a particular application or workload based on cost and performance and security actually even as well. And then data center decommissioning, you know, that has been around for quite some time, but we're seeing an accelerated rate to that now that people are adopting cloud. Um, as they continue to move applications over to the cloud or do new development in the cloud, they're reassessing, you know, how much infrastructure, how, you know, many servers, how much storage, you know, physical assets do they need to have in their data center anymore. So big challenges that organizations are really struggling with nowadays. And it's actually requiring, you know, new tools, new processes, and new skills out there in organizations. Uh, so one of the things that we have seen as adoption has occurred is, you know, there are new cloud operation teams being formed. And the cloud operation teams are specific, traditionally responsible for really managing the, the spend associated with cloud. And what happens is, you know, typically lots of cloud buyers, so a lot of money is being spent in the public cloud. And that tends to get out of control really fast. Budgets have to be put in place, and then spend gets managed to budget, always a good thing. Um, and then once they get that under control, then they want to start seeing how can they optimize the money that they are spending out in the cloud. So making sure that they have right-sized resources, making sure that they don't have services that are sitting out there unused, um, making sure that they have the right pricing models. You know, so there's a lot of considerations for making sure that you optimize your spend out in the public cloud. And then we need to really marry that to our, you know, kind of for what has been traditionally called capacity management. Capacity management has always been a cost optimization activity. Um, 
So that is not going away. In fact, we're seeing a bigger demand for that more than ever. So, you know, organizations that have, you know, strong capacity teams in place are really benefiting from that because they understand their workloads, they can make smart decisions, they have the tooling to actually help determine how to best, you know, uh, if you're going to move something to the cloud, how to, you know, make the best choice for uh, services that you want to buy over there. And then this team, you know, remember in most organizations, it's responsible for hybrid applications. So they need a view of both on-prem and the public cloud. So they also have a need for, you know, managing their cloud costs as well. But we're seeing that, you know, companies that do well really have a strong relationship between these two organizations and they really are leveraging the skill set of the team that has always helped them really make the right choice, infrastructure choices and optimize the use of those infrastructure on-prem and applying those same practices over to the cloud. So I just wanted to quickly walk through a couple of uh, use cases, some new use cases um, that have, we've delivered some new capabilities in both our TrueSight Capacity Optimization product, and then we have a new cloud cost uh, product that Rick is going to show you in a minute. So I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of a couple of use cases that organizations now. Um, you know, we're seeing as part of cloud and actually DevOps too, you know, there's a huge focus on business services and applications as opposed to technology. You know, we really used to look at technology layers in the past. Well, now everything is looked in the context of an application or a business service. You know, you don't own the infrastructure that you buy in the cloud. What you're doing is you're buying infrastructure that is related to you know, to run applications that are out there in the cloud. Um, and the same thing for your on-prem. So in our TrueSight Capacity Optimization product, we now have a business service view. It gives you a view of all of the business services in your enterprise. You can assign levels of importance to them so that you can make sure that folks are, um, you know, focusing on your most important business applications and making sure that they are healthy before some of your, um, uh, more insignificant um, applications that are running. The other thing is, is we give you a nice view of, you know, where is, where are you using that infrastructure? Is it in the cloud? And if so, which cloud providers or is it on-prem? And what is your usage like on a daily basis? And then kind of a high level risk profile. So, you know, something like this is great for kind of an, an executive view and then just kind of an overall health and risk and efficiency view. And you can drill down into this view and take a particular business service and it'll show you the different layers of applications within that business service. And then along with that, you know, a nice view of once again, health and risk associated with the business service and individual application. And you can drill down even further into this and get down to the component level, but you are entering this from kind of a service and application view. You know, another challenge that I mentioned was uh, migrations. And so organizations need help with um, migrations. And we are, we have a way to help them. So we can actually, because in our true site capacity optimization tool, we understand what workloads are being run. We understand the usage patterns associated with those workloads. So we can do some analysis on that and then turn around and make some recommendations to you on what cloud equip, what cloud service should you be buying? So if you decide to move that workload over to AWS, Azure, or Google, we'll make a recommendation on the size of the VM. We will show you, you know, how you're using a, that VM on-prem right now today and what is your, you know, usage. And then, you know, what is the equivalent recommendation or what would a right-sized recommendation be for moving that over to the cloud? And once again, we'll show you usage on it. We'll also show you some performance metrics to make sure that you understand if there is a performance difference when you make the move from on-prem over to cloud. And then we'll also provide you some um, price comparisons as well. So you can understand what it would cost to run it in AWS, Azure, or Google. And also, you know, what is the best method for you to go ahead and commission, purchase that service? Is it on demand or a one-year discount or a three-year discount? And we'll show you all the information associated with that so you can make an informed decision. And then, you know, I mentioned that we also have a TrueSight, a new TrueSight Cloud Cost product. 
um, once again, you know, cost is just such a huge focus for organizations nowadays. They have to have some kind of cost management tool if they are in the cloud. Organizations cannot really move to the cloud without some cost management tool in place. You have to have visibility of your spend. You have to be able to manage to budget and you have to understand what you're buying. And, you know, if anybody's ever seen a, a company's cloud bill, you know, if you're using cloud services in any big way, you know, you can have a, a bill that is hundreds, literally hundreds of pages long on any given month. So not easy to make sense out of what you're buying, who's buying it, and how it's being used. In fact, impossible. And so you really do have to have a cost management tool. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Rick so he can actually show you the uh, TrueSight Cloud Cost tool and some of the capabilities that we have there. Rick? Let's see. Hey, this is Seth. Uh, I'm going to change Rick to the presenter, but uh, I'm not seeing him on the audio bridge. Rick, if you dialed in with your regular number instead of the Skype number where I can't see you, you'll have to let me know what that phone number is so that I can unmute you. I feel like it might be that number, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, give me one second, folks. Let me just see if I can get Rick on the line here. Yeah. There's the screen. He's got it. Okay. That's what I figured. Let me unmute. Okay, Rick, you should be unmuted now. Can you hear me now? We can. Thank you. Outstanding. Okay, good. And you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, good. Um, so I'm, uh, I want to show our TrueSight Cloud Cost service that Robin mentioned. Just take a few minutes to do that and provide a quick overview. Um, it's important to note that the TrueSight Cl Cloud Cost service is built first on our CloudOps platform. So I'm logged into this platform and I'm as accessing the cost service as an administrator. And the reason that's important is because the, as part of the platform, the service shares common services between cost and our security service, such as users, uh, connectors. Connectors are the mechanisms that we use to uh, reach out to public cloud accounts like AWS and Azure and Google Cloud. And probably for our purposes today, uh, most important is resource pools. Resource pools. Um, in a nutshell, allow our customers to define resources and put them in a business context so they make more sense. So, for example, your payroll application could be just a resource pool or a particular account could be a resource pool. And resource pools also could scan, uh, could span public cloud environments if it made sense uh, in, your, in a particular business context. So that's the Cloud Ops platform. Now let's, let's talk more about Cloud costs. So Robin mentioned three things. She talked about visibility, budgets, and then optimizations in this context. So what we're trying to do here is provide our customers a proactive visibility into their cloud spend. Um, that's important. She mentioned this as well. Uh, a lot of times after the fact, you'll get a bill, uh, and it's a it's sticker shock. It can be huge uh, in many cases. So. Being able to see what the spend is as you're spending it and, and proactively do something about it is critical. Being able to set budgets, uh, once you have that visibility is kind of a step two. So you kind of, you get visibility and then you manage it. And then lastly, how can you optimize the cost that you're, that you're using? So let's take a, take a look at these things in a little bit more detail. So I'm logged as an, in as an administrator here. <clears throat> so what that means is I've got overall visibility into everything. I can see my cloud spend across all my environments, including AWS and Azure here. Now you can imagine um, being able to give business units, for example, visibility into, into their own costs. So essentially push that responsibility out to them so that they can see their costs 
and, and act on them um, in a proactive fashion. So, but for, for our purposes today, I'm an administrator. So I'm looking at total costs here. What this shows me is my daily trend of my spend. Um, I'm currently uh, up 2%, and actually this is for the previous month, but I am up I was up 2%. I've also got a breakdown of AWS costs here and Azure costs here. And then looking at the uh, screen below, we can also see how this compares to the previous month. So I've got, this is my spend, and it's up, as you see, 2% from, from the previous month month's cost. And then I've got a daily breakdown here. And on the right-hand side, we're looking at the total resources. Now, this is a, in this case, this is across all these accounts. So I've got some 24,000 resources, nearly 25,000 resources across 62 accounts across AWS and Azure, and I'm using more than I had been. So just, in, just by logging in and looking at the dashboard, you get a quick view of where you're at with your, with your cloud spend. So let me, let me show you how we can break this down further. So now, if we want to see, well, which resources in these environments uh, are costing me the most? I can look at it in terms of the, uh, the bill. I can explore my bill, which, is, which can be very, as Robin said, you can get many, many pages on your bill. But here, now we can break it down for you and see what things are costing, what's costing the most, for example. I can see I've got a C3 extra large instance in the U.S. West region that's costing me nearly $3,000, for example. If I want to break this down by services, we can do that here as well. So we can slice and dice the data uh, several different ways. So here I've got a breakdown of all my services across AWS and Azure, what they're costing me, what the change in cost is, what percentage, what percentage up that is or down, and how many resources are using that service. Similarly, account, an account view provides me the similar details as well. So this is uh, visibility, getting visibility into what you're spending. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, resource pools I mentioned uh, earlier about uh, that it's it shared with the, uh, through the Cloud Ops platform. So resource pools give us an additional ability that we can define resources that fall into these pools that make sense to the business. So if I pick a pool here, I've got a, a, alpha, a pool called Alpha Prod. It's got 274 resources in it. There's a budget of $1,500 monthly, and this is what it's actually costing me. So let me just drill in and show you the details of that. So here, as I mentioned, we can set the budget on this pool. The budget can be set, set monthly or quarterly. But what's important here as well is we can set notifications. So notifications give me the ability to get alerts when I'm, when I'm getting near my budget. If I come back out to the, oops, I went too far. So in this particular resource pool, I've got visibility into this spend, what, I'm, what my total cost is, what my budget is, what I, was, what I spent last month, and what my projected cost would be as I go forward into June and July. Also, similar to the dashboard, I can see the total resources and if I'm trending up or down here. So you can see uh, it's very easy to slice and dice the data, the cost data, and look at it whichever way makes sense. Now, let's drill into a use case. Let's say I'm a I've got an uh, AWS, I'm responsible for AWS accounts, and I want to know why I'm up 2%. It's easy to do. We can click in the AWS tab, and similarly, we've got different views for that as well. So I can, uh, now, now, I'm, now I'm restricted to just AWS resources. I can look and see, well, why are my uh, AWS services, what, what AWS services are costing me the most, and um, here I'm looking at Athena, it's costing me, well, let me sort this, my cost. Well, I can see that um, uh, these, uh, these AWS resources are costing me, um, what's costing me the most uh, in, for this particular month. So lastly, let's, let me switch back out. So now I've got visibility uh, across the board with my total costs, I can break it down by AWS and Azure. I can see specific details about why things are costing me what they are. And then 
The last thing we want to talk about is now once we've got visibility and we can set budgets and, and manage to those budgets, um, what can we do to optimize those? And so the bottom of the screen provides that information. So we've got uh, recommendations here and that, that help us save money. So in this case, we've got it's, the system is found through machine learning that there's 27 idle VMs across these accounts that if they were shut down, for example, they could save us nearly uh, $750 a month um, if, they were, if they were managed properly. So I can click into these and get more detail about these VMs. Similarly, um, it, we, we'll have other recommendations here as well. Over allocated VMs could show up as well as um, how we could make better use of re reserved instances. But for this, for this demo, we've got some idle VMs out there. This shows me the list of, um, of idle VMs that are recommended to be uh, terminated in this case, and you can see the list here. So I could pick and choose what makes sense to terminate, for example, and either ignore the recommendation, or I could act on it by terminating the VMs. And so um, by doing that, what will happen is the uh, cloud cost service will reach out through the API and communicate with, in this case, with uh, AWS or Azure, it could be, and terminate the VMs, shut them down, so that the, the savings are, are realized. So um, with that, let me pause and allow Robin to uh, add anything she'd like to add at this point or open it up for questions, Seth. So uh, I think we have five minutes left, so if there's questions, that would be good. Okay, so we'll, um, we'll go ahead and keep an eye on the chat and the Q&A. If you prefer to ask the question verbally, uh, you can, in the chat window, let me know and just let me know what phone number you're dialing in from, and I'd be happy to unmute you. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see names, just, uh, just phone numbers for, for all the folks who dialed in. Um, so, so, Robin, while we're, while we're waiting, was there um, anything else that you wanted to mention here? Um, well, one of the things I'll mention is, is uh, because it's a SaaS platform, you know, there's going to be rapid development on this. So you'll see new capabilities coming out, you know, every couple of weeks. So this is something that will mature very quickly. And if anybody has requirements, you know, I encourage you to engage with either your sales rep or somebody that you have a relationship with at BMC, software consultant, or through the community, you know, any of us, and just let us know, you know, what your requirements are so that we can get those factored in because that is uh, certainly, you know, a big, the way that we add capabilities, the priorities are set through really what customers are demanding. Yeah. Great. Thank so, you. Yeah. I want to recap for everybody to just make sure we got the key, the key takeaways. So I'm going to pull up uh, Robin's slide again. And so I think the key message here around what's happening is there's obviously the explosion and adoption of public cloud uh, has changed, um, changed the way organizations are having to manage cost. But uh, unless you're a cloud native like startup, the reality is it's a it's a complicated dance between the, the applications and workloads that you're currently running uh, in a data center, the ones you're building in the cloud, and then the ones you want to move from the data center to the cloud. So there's really still these three use cases where you have still have to manage on-premises assets, and you're managing them either uh, towards um, decommissioning, or they may, you may be managing them to migrate to the cloud, but you're also, or you might be managing them just to maintain because the profile of the workload makes sense to keep it in your own data center. Um, and so, you know, the the traditional the traditional discipline of capacity management is still very much alive and very viable. Um, but those folks who do that, which is probably the majority of the ones on the call, are also being called to help understand how to profile those workloads because you understand what's there, you understand what the spend is, you understand the profile and say, is this a good candidate for the cloud? Is this a good candidate for 
moving to the cloud is this a good candidate for refactoring and just building new in the cloud? And so having the ability to leverage that data center, the knowledge of your existing workloads to do what if migration simulation, you know, simulate migration, do what if scenarios and so forth. When you're talking about managing in the cloud, it's a very, it's, it's still a true, it's still a, a management discipline around what the spend is, but the, the paradigm is so different because you have customized billing for your particular account and your multiple cloud instances that need to be pulled in. And that can be immediately correlated with the spend of every single resource in your cloud environment. So instead of, <clears throat> instead of optimizing uh, a workload or, or infrastructure kind of, you know, on a cadence, like over time, and then thinking about how can we migrate, how can we optimize it, you're literally in the day-to-day -day management of what's happening in your infrastructure. Because when you spread all the users uh, uh, over your organization who are buying resources, whether it's compute resources or, uh, or anything like that, you need as a, as a cloud management person to be able to see very quickly what's happening and take action very quickly or spend can spiral out of control uh, very quickly. So it's the disciplines are related and the functions in the organization are still necessary. Um, there's, there's two different functions that have to work together, but the tooling that you use to accomplish both of those is somewhat different. And I think that was kind of, sorry if that's a little long-winded, but I wanted to bring it back home and just make sure that the message was really clear. Yeah, the other thing I would say, Jeff, is, you know, um, if you're a capacity manager, I would encourage you to think about, you know, how you can help your company with their cloud adoption process in terms of you have, you know, you have a lot of good skills, you're doing a lot of analysis and have been for your on-prem, that is still relevant to the cloud. It's just that organizations think, think in terms of dollars when it comes to the cloud instead of resources. So do resources still need to be modeled? Yes, but they need to be modeled so that companies can understand what their spend is going to be and how to set budgets. Because there's infinite amount of resources out there in the cloud, but there is not an infinite amount of money inside your company. <laughs> so they, you still need that. The other thing is, is um, you know, if you have a cloud native application, it can be, you know, geared to take care of, um, to do auto scaling and, you know, architect very differently so it can take advantage of some of these newer cloud services. If you're doing a lift and shift, you still have a lot of the traditional management around that application to do, even though it is running on cloud services. So there is a important role for um, capacity management to play in cloud adoption and the ongoing use of cloud. Thank you, Robin, well said. All right, um, so we'll hold it open for any last minute questions. Um, we're right at time, just to make sure there's nothing else in the chat window. All right, well listen, I wanna thank everybody for attending. Thank you, Robin and Rick for presenting. As I mentioned, uh, give me a day or so to get the recording and the slides out to uh, BMC communities. If you have any questions, concerns, um, you can send them to me directly, Seth underscore Paskin at bmc.com. And then also just to let you know if you're interested, um, this particular the tool that Rick showed, uh, we do have free trials available. So if you're interested in taking a, a, a spin around or seeing, connecting it to your, uh, you know, your cloud instance and getting a, a quick read on what's happening, uh, we can certainly arrange for that trial process to take place. Yeah, and Seth, uh, thanks for bringing that up. They, uh, anybody can go out to bmc.com slash cloud cost, and there's a web page out there with some content on it if you want to learn more, and you can actually register for a free trial on that web page. Perfect. All right, well, thank you everybody thank you. for attending. Uh, thanks, Rick and Robin. I'm going to go ahead and end the session now. Um, have a great weekend. Uh, weekend. I wish it was the weekend. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.